the latest Fantastic Four movie is not faring well. Critically, commercially, plus there's been reports of an outbreak of bird flu in one cinema. All around, this film is not having a good time. I don't believe this is an accident though, and I've made it my personal mission to find out what parties are responsible for this? So I've compiled a stack of news reports and rumors and tweets and speculation from the last few years to attempt to make sense of it all. As a result, one of the walls in my house looks like I've been tracking the killer from Seven. And I don't care. I just want to know, how the hell did this happen? Going right back to the start. According to director Josh Trank when speaking on the podcast Fat Man on Batman, before Chronicle even hit cinemas, 20th Century Fox was so impressed with what he'd achieved in his first directorial effort that he was in with a really good shot of taking on the reboot of the Fantastic Four. Though as Max Landis, who co-wrote on Chronicle, pointed out, the autonomy that they were allowed on that project was a fluke. It just doesn't happen. There was this weird aligning of stars and Trank just happened to be there. Plus at a cost of $12 million, and the fact that these characters didn't belong to anyone meant that they could basically do whatever they wanted. So when Trank did officially come on board for Fantastic Four, he was handed a budget 10 times that of Chronicle. Everything seemed to be going swimmingly. He developed the story alongside Simon Kinberg, who's worked on the X-Men series, as well as having a hand in the new slate of Star Wars films, one of which Trank was going to direct before leaving, but we'll get back to that. Now there have been rumblings about pushback from the studio in terms of who they wanted to cast in the lead roles, but in the end, Trank did get who he wanted, even receiving Stan Lee's blessing for the casting of Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm. Then in January of 2014, a supposed official synopsis appeared online that made mention of how in this version of the Fantastic Four, two of its members, Ben Grimm and Reed Richards, were affected by an event at the age of 16. And instead of becoming the superheroes everyone was familiar with, the government began using them as weapons. The internet was not happy about this as the internet tends to be about most things. Trank at the time took to Twitter to deny this, but then the studio ordered Den of Geek to remove the synopsis. Which is weird, seeing as the site made it clear in their article that Trank had already debunked this. If you skip forward to the present day, from the finished product, it appears that Fox's reasoning for this was that the synopsis was at least partially true, as Ben Grimm was being used as a government weapon. According to Entertainment Weekly and Collider, just prior to the project going into production, after all parties had agreed on what movie was going to be made, last minute changes, including the removal of three major action set pieces were imposed on Trank. The reasoning for this? Possibly budgetary, or maybe they were still spooked by negative fan reaction. Regardless, department heads scrambled to try and get this project back on track, whilst at the same time, decisions were still being made by indecisive studio heads. To add fuel to the fire, actor Toby Kebble revealed that his character, Doctor Doom, was to receive a name change, and was to now go by Victor Domachev, a computer programmer. Trank stated on Fat Man on Batman that the name Victor Domachev Domachev was never going to last, but Kebble recently revealed otherwise. Unfortunately, he also happened to use the word blogger in his original interview, and again, everybody lost their minds. This situation was rectified in the final cut, with the name Victor Von Doom seemingly ADR'd in over one of the actor's lines in an early boardroom sequence. Then the rumors started circulating about the director himself, trashing the New Orleans house he was staying in with his dogs whilst filming, and being indecisive and not communicating to all parties on set. Now there's enough reports online to indicate that this is at the very least partially true. And the thing is, this shouldn't the be the manner in which a person conducts themselves when headlining a major motion picture. But I can't help feel that this wouldn't have happened if the studio hadn't made such drastic last minute changes and then apparently continue to interfere the length of the 72 day shoot. Then the rumors of massive reshoots being required surfaced, as again, it was said that the studio was not happy with what they'd seen. Initially, it was said that Matthew Vaughn was brought in, something later debunked, which I'd believe. Nothing about this movie says Matthew Vaughn. But it was said that producers Simon Kinberg and Hutch Parker did take this on, shooting over 40 pages of additional material, which amounts to over a third of the project. It has been said though that Trank was present during these reshoots. The changes that were made are very apparent. Most noticeably, Kate Mara's hair alters from natural to a weird straw blonde wig seemingly at random. Sometimes with her leaving one room with one hair color, then entering another 
with a different hair color. Plus the final act feels like it belongs in another movie. Not to mention that the special effects are all over the place, probably due to time constraints, but also, according to John Schnepp, director of The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened. Great flick, by the way, you should check it out. One of the special effects supervisors was removed without the knowledge of Trank. Insult to injury. It was also reported that the director was locked out of the editing bay, which explains why certain scenes in the film make no sense or don't seem to fit in any context and how things we've seen in the trailer don't appear in the final film. Kate Mara and Jamie Bell even made mention of how they had a scene together early on, which would have helped bring the whole team together more, but obviously that didn't make it in. All this explains why the 3D conversion was shelved, with neither the time or the money available to get that going. And it also explains why we didn't see a trailer for this film until January just gone, because I'd imagine that Fox still had no idea what kind of movie this was going to be. Now, I don't want to point any fingers, but I'm going to start pointing some bloody fingers. Fox have a history of messing with their own projects to the detriment of a film. Under similar circumstances, director Gavin Hood was pushed into making the Wolverine film that he didn't want. Fox, though, will put their trust in directors like Matthew Vaughn and Brian Singer. Maybe they're considered more experienced, or maybe they're just less willing to be pushed around. Whatever the reason, they get more free reign on their projects. And the thing is, Fox aren't all bad. Studios interfere all the time. I like what they've done with the X-Men franchise, and Deadpool looks amazing. And they'd be wise to step right away from that film and let first-time director Tim Miller handle it. But due to such positive fan reaction to the latest trailer, I'd imagine that they're happy with how things are going there. Will Josh Trank bounce back, though? Well, there were rumors that he was fired from his Star Wars standalone film due to Kinberg's involvement in the franchise. But I'm not so sure that this is the case. Maybe he genuinely does want to make smaller films, as opposed to feeling bullied by another major studio. Regardless, I hope he lands on his feet. And he most likely will. A similar situation situation happened to David Fincher on Alien 3, which is another Fox project that ended up a total mess for very similar reasons. Sure, he went back to selling shoes for a couple of years, but he did go on to make bigger and better things. At the end of the day, I understand why Fox was spooked. It's their money, but there comes a point where you gotta step back and let the creatives do what they wanna do if you wanna make more money. And also, don't let fan backlash send you into a spiral. People don't know what the hell they want and will complain regardless. Because you know what's gonna end up happening? You're gonna end up with another bloody poisoned franchise that's dishing out bird flu to its audience. I don't know what the hell they're gonna do with the Fantastic Four now. They can maybe send it back to Marvel in exchange for approval on their X-Men TV series, or maybe get some merchandise rights back. Or maybe they could put it out on their lawn, like a piece of hard rubbish. Someone will probably pick it up, eventually. Thanks everyone. Now if you liked this, I've got a couple of videos that might interest you, or perhaps even my podcast, The Weekly Planet, that covers movies and TV shows and comics. I'll link all those things below and at the end of this video. But what do you think happened to the Fantastic Four reboot? I'd love to hear your thoughts. So if you have any, please feel free to leave them below. All right. Thanks everyone. Take care.